everybody and welcome back to the Choose to Think Inspirational Podcast. I have a treat for you today and her name is Erin Porter. That's E-R-I-N Porter. And this is what she says, that you can heal from the depths of despair with God's help is her story. I love that. I love that she says that. And don't you wonder what kind of depths of despair that she actually sank to. She is an author of Eat, Pray, Get Well. Eat, Pray, Get Well. It's a journey from chronic illness and brokenness to wholeness and healing. She's been interviewed on ABC, CBS, NBC, PBS, American Health Journal, CTN, Know the Cause, and more. What's her story? Well, at 18 years old and after an abusive childhood, she was desperate to leave her parents' house. She got a job in Manhattan and rented the only apartment that she could afford. It had the typical New York roaches and visible mold. Ugh. but she was absolutely ecstatic to be out on her own because it felt like an answered prayer to her. Unfortunately, the excitement was short-lived, as you can imagine. Instead of embarking on a new journey of exploring the big city, she was running literally from doctor to doctor on her lunch hour, trying to figure out what was single-handedly trying to steal her health and her finances out from under her since she moved to Manhattan. Within weeks of moving in, she started to experience really bizarre symptoms. And this marked the beginning of a 20 plus year descent into chronic illness. Because she developed tunnel vision, her thoughts were consumed with trying to unravel the cause of her failing health. She spent enormous amounts of tears, frustration, and money trying to get well. Upon research and becoming her own best health advocate, and maybe that's what you need to do too, she ultimately did get well, but it was a long, long journey, and she found a steady companion in the process. Now, who do you think that might have been? If you said God, you're right. The second edition of her book, Eat, Pray, Get Well, was has just recently been released. And in this edition, she's going to talk about it on the show in a moment. She's going to, she interviewed some really great guests and put those interviews in her book. You're going to get to read about Carol Out, Joe Cross. Um, let's see, cardiologist Stephen Sinatra, Doug Kaufman. Any, anyway, you, you're you going to hear all of this and more as we chat. Our direction, I always like to have these organic chats on the show, and but I loved how we zoned in really quickly to emotional eating, and she, she talks about her binge eating that she had and had experienced as a result of some of the dysfunction in her home and so forth. And, and so we got to talk about like nowadays, how she connected the dots from where she was, this person who was desperate to where she is now. And you're going to see that person now, someone who's healthy and vibrant and alive and, and confessing how great God is in her life and how he's accompanying, accompanied her on this journey. You're going to see all of that, but she's going to connect the dots there. But in the middle of that, we get to talk about some of the the binge eating and emotional eating that she experienced. We even talk about her favorite sugars. So you're going to have to stay tuned to figure out because, you know, like there are a gazillion sugars out there, right? Like which sugar do you eat if you, you don't want these fake ones, but, and you want these natural alcohol sugars, I guess, but you don't want regular sugar in any way. And what that causes, because some of the mold and the infection she had in her body was, was fungal infection and, you know, how sugar is linked to, to all of that. So anyway, we talk about that. I, I enjoyed that part and just kind of picking her brain a little bit, but anyway, she's going to tell you all about the book, the recipes that are in there, and she's going to link you back to her website, which is eatpraygetwell.com. It's all one big long word, www.eatpraygetwell.com. And go over there and visit her, stay in touch with her, and check out her book and her ministry. So you're going to love the show. Stay tuned. All right. God bless. Erin, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. And I want you to just tell us about your book, and it's called, I want to get this right, because I think now you have the second edition of this yes. book, and it's called Eat, Pray, Get Well. I love the title, but right. tell us tell us all about it. God put this book on my heart, believe it or not, when I was in my early 20s. And to, looking back, it was kind of ridiculous, because in my early 20s, what did I have to say? Nothing. I was completely, <laughs> completely broken. 
mm. from the dysfunctional, most would say abusive home that I cover a little bit in the book and try to make it a little bit humorous so it's not so heavy. Um, so here I am painfully shy, um, barely speak, and God puts it on my heart. Not only are you going to have a book, but you're going to talk about it. I had like a quick vision of me on national, like a morning show talking about it, which was completely impossible. Like I said, I had trouble speaking to people, period. Mm -hmm. So to go on TV was probably, a, it was a very scary vision. I was excited about the book, but I thought, what the heck could this book ever be about? So decades later, um, a few decades later, I have a book. I have a second book. <laughs> and uh, yeah, done lots of television, lots and lots of television. And that's actually a story in itself that that's how I got over my severe, severe panic attacks and social anxiety was just being thrown to the wolves and getting approached to go on a national TV show, my first one. And I thought, God, there's oh. no way I can't do this. I just can't do it. But you know how you know you'll miss out on the best thing in your life? So I just yeah. decided I'll do it. And if I make a fool out of myself, if I pass out, well, I can live with that more than I can live with. I didn't do it. I was too scared to do it. Yes. But the first show that just cured me pretty much right off the bat of any of that. And just he's really healed me through this book and through all the experiences that have come with it. Mm. Well, tell us what it's about. Okay, so it's divided into three parts. The first part is emotional health. So we go through the journey of my childhood and the abuse, the neglect, the rejection was kind of unique. So I had to put it into stories, like vivid, so you can get an idea of what this abuse was like. And then um, we go into the next chapter is um, physical health because I became chronically ill when I moved uh, to Manhattan as a teenager to start my job and just got an apartment, the only thing I could afford. And it was just riddled with mold. But back then mm. I didn't think anything about, you know, perhaps this mold could make me sick and change the trajectory of my whole life. That's not a thought in my head, but that's what it did. And, um, the wheels just started falling off. I didn't know it was from mold. So I just continued to get more and more um, diagnosis of this and that and uh, stayed at that status quo for a couple decades until I found out what my cause was and then kind of went into overdrive trying to heal. And then last chapter is spiritual health, how God guided me even down to what doctor to go see that ultimately was a big part of my healing. But then in between is um, 55 really healthy recipes to kind of get your health back on track, as well as like inspirational, like I'll put a recipe plus um, the power of your thoughts, like in between these more heavy stories, so it can kind of lighten things up a little bit, because mm -hmm. it's supposed to be inspirational. It's not supposed to be sad. Right. And it's supposed to be uh, a testimony of how God can pull you out of physical health or emotional um, brokenness, really. Mm. Well, and now we see you now, like healthy, healed, happy, having shared your testimony. But can you connect the dots like between like your lowest moment and then how you got, how you literally, what were the little steps in between? What did you do to get from point A to point B? That's kind of a big question, but just mm -hmm. fill in a little bit more there to, to give us, because I'm sure that there are our audience, someone in our audience who would say, oh my goodness, I've been sick since, you know, 1998, or I still struggle emotionally with rejection, or I emotionally eat, you know, all we could yeah. come up with a gazillion scenarios, but how did you, we see you now, and your book is going to take us through those, but can you just give a, a, a little bit of a fill in the gap here between those two Hold extremes? On. Well, something you said stuck out in my mind. You said emotional eating. Mm. So I was a binge eater and it was bad. It, um, I always stayed thin. So to the people around me, it was kind of a joke. Like 
go, you know, hide the food from Aaron, you know, blah, 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 because I can mm -hmm. pack it down and I could never get enough, like, especially sugar. So you said, how'd you go from point A to point B? Um, it would have taken a lot, a lot less time, money, um, pain if I would have just obeyed God, like pretty much right off the bat, because he sort of started dealing with me about my food at some point. I was I was actually crying out to God, begging him for answers, because here I am, 18, 19, 20, sick as a dog. Oh God, why am I sick? And I'm shoving a hostess cupcake in my mouth while the tears and I'm praying and eating this cupcake as mm. I'm praying and crying. And that was a moment where and I thought, no, you can't touch my food. That you know, I don't <laughs> want you to touch my food. So then there was another time uh, I had kind of, I was allergic to everything. And it was confusing because I was allergic to even healthy food because I had such, wow. my gut was so destroyed from 20 something years of antibiotics, almost constant for 20 years. My gut lining was shot. So everything I ate went to the bloodstream, you know, past the barrier. So it could be fruit, it could be vegetables. And I started praying, God, what do I eat? I don't even know what to eat anymore. And I just remember it was so clear as I was just taking a walk and praying, no sugar, no yeast. It made no sense to me at that time. Now that I know that I had a severe, severe fungal infection that was not only in my sinuses that was constantly being to remove. Uh, constantly having to go under surgery to remove at four of those but it was systemic and what feeds uh candida fungus is sugar carbs right. yeast you're adding yeast to yeast you know um but i didn't obey that you know <laughs> went on year after year after year eating the same old thing that i always ate mcdonald's and vending machines and and um it got to be too heavy because he never stopped chasing me. And mm -hmm. we're talking about 15 years and I'm still doing what he told me not to do back there. And I'm still sick. So when am I going to get my act together and, and start doing the last thing he told me to do? So a lot of guilt, <laughs> you know, if God's chasing you and you're not listening and you're not mm -hmm. obeying, you can't live in peace. And so that's where I kind of sat for a long time and my food was my idol. And I didn't even realize I was making food my idol, perhaps even over my health, over God, over everything. Mm. So I had to finally come to grips and deal with that. And that was one of the hardest things I probably had to do is give up those things that I love. But that's where the recipes came in the book because I think there's people out there like me, well, where the heck do you start? But now it's easier. There's gluten-free flours and sugar substitutes sure. that are just fine that, that don't feed, you know, candida and mold and fungus and, you know, will help your, because uh, cancer, you know, cancer is, um, needs the same fuel, that sugar, those carbs, you know, it's very similar. So I wanted to throw that in the book as well because people need recipes and know where to start. Because when I was starting, I was so lost. I would cry in the grocery store because I don't, what is coconut flour? I don't even know what that is. I don't know what that means. And then <laughs> how, what do you do with this stuff? How do you put it together? So I just wanted to put recipes in there too, instead of just talking about, you have to, you should try to eat like this. Well, and here's 55 things you could put together and try and change your taste buds. And then the emotional, and I, now that I look back, that eating, that binging was pain. I was just trying to fill some sort of void and it helped, it did help with the pain. You know, I would get that, probably a drug addict, you, you know, you get that high. I just remember taking the first bite of something and like my whole body would, it would just, the anxiety would melt and it's mm -hmm. this, it's like, it was a drug. Yeah, it was definitely my drug for sure. Yeah, I think that's like dopamine. You know, there you can eat a donut and boom, you get kind of comforted. But often waiting for the Holy Spirit, it's not just instantaneous. Okay. Sometimes it's it's that long 
enduring that moment and actually feeling the feelings that are going on, recognizing them and facing those feelings and not running from them or trying to find some pseudo comfort when really we just need to go through that painful moment, that painful feeling, that those painful thoughts, we just need to kind of walk through them. And then on the other end of that, continuing to ask the Lord for help and for his comfort, for the comfort that only he can endure. But unfortunately, I mean, I'm going to say, use the word unfortunately, because it's not instant. <laughs> if only, and maybe for some people it is, I don't know, but for me personally, and I've also struggled with, you know, various eating disorders, disordered eating and using food for comfort and as a distraction and just as a way to kind of check out and, and facing off instead against the, whatever issue is going on in my life, whatever I don't like, whatever is uncomfortable, you know, that's not pleasant. And, and the relief doesn't come as fast as if I just grab a bag of M&Ms or something like that. So that emotional eating, I think, is something that plagues a lot of us. And we want the comfort and we want it fast. So how did you retrain your brain and your body to say, no, I'm not going to eat that junky stuff though I'll feel good immediately I'm not going to do this I'm going to I'm going to do this instead how how did you do that a lot of doing that and then falling off the wagon and getting back on and falling off and getting back on and doing that over and over and over and over again and I don't know the answer to that I don't know if that's God's healing the the more you're healed the more you stop falling off the wagon. I'm not really sure. And I'm not perfect. I mean, sometimes I'll have a day here and there where I'll get a bite of something. And that's kind of a trigger for me. There's some foods that are definitely triggers. And then I got to have more and I got to have more and I got to, and then I'm like, okay, the day shot, I might as well just go eat whatever I want for the day. <laughs> so, you know, and it's like exciting and start over again. And that, that happens once in a while, but that's not my lifestyle anymore. So I don't mm. feel guilty about it anymore mm -hmm. so I don't care if I go out and have like a crazy day and eat whatever I want which doesn't happen very often it's okay I'm not going back to that horrible place where I wake up in the middle of the night because I'm sorry god I did it again I don't, you know I can't do this thank god I'm, I'm not there anymore and I don't know if that is god's healing maybe or just getting so disgusted with yourself. And I can say this because it is an addiction. If you can get three, four days behind you, because mm -hmm. there's also it and there is also something to parasites, which fungus mm -hmm. candida is a parasite. They want to live and they want and they need know what food they need to live. So you'll get these cravings. So it's not always emotional. And I probably had both going on. Mm -hmm. So you have to think of it like that too. Do you want to wake up this thing that you know is in, is in your body that you're trying to kill, that you're trying to starve? So um, I think that there's some of that too going on. But back to like, if you just put three, four days under your belt, mm -hmm. those cravings really, really, really do go away. And then that's where you can, you're, you're mentally, you kind of change. Now there's cake and you already know, I'm not really craving it right now, but I know if I take that bite, I know where I'll be. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really hard unless you get those days under your belt to where you the cravings stop and you can see the cake and go, I really don't want it. I kind of want it, but I know what'll happen if I have it. It's so much easier to say no. Mm. What is your favorite alternative for sugar? I use, I just put on my website, I made um, like a cream cheese, a sugar-free cream cheese frosting. It was so delicious. And I used powdered monk fruit, okay. but then in baking, I'll use xylitol. And then okay. sometimes I'll make my own lemonade um, and I'll just squeeze fresh lemon and then put drops of stevia. So I pretty much use monk fruit, xylitol, stevia for okay. different purposes. Yeah, that's kind of what we use too. But, you know, I my husband prefers just 
give me sugar, just the regular sugar. And so what I've noticed is that for me personally, I like to put friction between me and the food that could be a trigger food for me. But now with him, I can't do that. Like he has a favorite coffee creamer. So I'm not going to say, well, you can't have your coffee creamer. So there comes to a point where, you know, you, it's that temptation may be there, that trigger food may be there. And like you said, the more we're not kind of taking it in, the easier it becomes, but it's still kind of tricky for me because I'm like, oh, coffee, I can do it just with some stevia. It's fine. I can do it black. No problem. But sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, I just, I'm more tempted because I have to see it. So do you actually ever put things in your house that would tempt you or do you uh, keep, just keep those out of sight, so to speak? Well, I'm not a coffee drinker, but my husband is, and he <laughs> has found the creamers because that was hard for him at first, but mm -hmm. there's so many creamers out now that have stevia in them or whatever, monk fruit, and he thinks they're delicious. I don't know, but, yeah. uh, so I never used to bring in any junk at all. Well, there's okay. teenagers in the house now with jobs, so they're bringing in tons of, tons of junk. <laughs> um, they try not to they try to eat healthy for the most part but they've got cars and they have money now and that's just what they do so they bring in junk put their name on it and um I'm surprised that no not really I'm not really tempted because like I said I have all these days under my belt but the other thing is your taste buds change mm. which is a miracle so now um, once in a while at a restaurant, I'll be like, oh, yes, I'm going to try that bread pudding or whatever, it is, really sugary. And it's like, it's too just sweet. not what you used to love anymore. Mm. And so I'm just so happy for that, that the taste buds change. And I'm more excited about like real food and like healthier desserts and then, you know, that kind of stuff anymore. Thank God. Mm. Do you eat a lot of dried fruit or try to be careful with that too? Like raisins and dates? No, be because I had such a severe infection, I will, for the rest of my life, kind of eat just berries, um, green apples, lemons, limes, grapefruit. That's probably about it. And then once in a while, I might put a banana in my smoothie, but not really, because it's just kind of always on my mind, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think you know, those fruits are fine for other people if you don't have any health issues. You know, I have nothing against that, but I just stick to the really low sugar fruits. Gotcha. And tell us a little bit, Erin, about the difference between edition one and edition two of the book. I know, but I want you to tell us. Okay. I have some fantastic interviews in the second edition that I'm really excited about. So these were people who I found kind of inspiring to me when I was sick. Um, there's supermodel Carol Alt. The, the reason I found her was because she had all these sinus infections, uh, allergic to everything, always on Afrin, you know, and she's the supermodel, looks like the picture of health. Well, she thought she was dying. She was so yeah. sick and she cried out to God and God showed her what to do. And she was much quicker and smarter than I was. She literally the next day, everything was cut off and different and, and went raw and, <laughs> makes me feel kind of stupid that I went, you know, so long, but just people have different personalities and some people mm -hmm. are more stubborn. So she goes through what completely got her well. And for her it was food. It was something as simple as food. And then I have um, Joe Cross from the movie Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. And that is such a great movie if you haven't seen it. So he was on, he's like 40 years old on nine medications, um, very wealthy, wow. living this lifestyle and of, you know, beer and eating whatever he wants, but it was catching up to him and he had autoimmune disease and he felt like, I don't know if I'll make it to 50, you know, if I keep going like this. So he changed his diet and started juicing. It's a really, really good movie. Um, so I interview him, Doug Kaufman from the show, Know the Cause. He also came back from Vietnam uh, as a 21 year old with a severe fungal infection, you know, being in the jungle, right? Uh, you know, knee deep for days on end and jungle rot, which is fungus. And he came back just severely ill, just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. I'm 21 years old and my 
world is falling apart. So he has studied um, mycology now for 40 something years, the study of fungus and it's linked to cancer and to pretty much name it anything because it can invade any tissue organ. And so I interviewed him and Tommy Rosa, Tommy Rosa died and mm. he, had, he had a near death experience and came back and he believes he met Jesus and Jesus told him some health revelations, how to stay healthy here on earth. So he said, go back and tell people what you've learned. So I put in the book what those um, health revelations are, you know, that Tommy says he got from Jesus and uh, just, and there's a few more. And um, I just, I love those interviews in there. And then I have like a a good detox program to kind of help if you don't know like where do I start of course you have to go talk to your doctor first but sort of a this was a plan from my doctor you know so mm-hmm. it's not me I'm not a doctor I'm not a physician right. but he he told me to go ahead and put that in the book so yeah I'm really happy and proud of this book and I think there's something in there for everybody whether you're sick physically or you've got um, strongholds of hurt maybe from your past, or you just need recipe help. There's a lot in there. Mm. And what was the most enjoyable part about writing this book? Mm. I think knowing that God put it on my heart, I felt like this is not just me. So this is, this is a gift from God. Mm. And I can't wait to see what he does with it and where I'm going to end up because of it. Mm. Yeah. Well, what's next for you, Erin? What do you see coming down the pike? That's a good question. Um, I see me, I have a website by the same mm-hmm. name, Eat, Pray, Get Well. And I just see me doing that until I'm gone. <laughs> I have no <laughs> plans on stopping that. So everything I learn that's new or new recipes or new information it goes on the website. So uh, any new TV shows. So that's a good place, you know, to find me and see what's going on. But that's my plan. Just keep going with Eat, Pray, Get Well. Very good. And can you say the website again and how people can get in touch with you or find your book? Yeah. Yeah. Eat, Pray, Get Well at well.com and the book is on there it's on amazon it's sold in some retail stores you can also find it on mike lindell's my store now Mm -hmm. he sells it there and um yeah and i hope you visit me um you can email me too at uh erin at eatpraygetwell.com that's e-r-i-n and i try to answer everybody very good. And can, as we close, Erin, could you just maybe address that one person in the audience who feels so discouraged and overwhelmed, just like fed up with themselves. And they're at that point where they're praying often, okay, I blew it again, Lord. I don't know what to do. What would you tell that person? What, how would you encourage that listener? To have patience with yourself to love yourself because I think part of the reason we get into the cycle is we don't love ourselves enough and so we're not respecting our bodies we don't Mm. we don't respect ourselves and so you know find ways to love yourself more and God's not disappointed in you he already Mm. knew you're going to do this 100 times 200 times and he loves you so much he's still chasing you that's why you feel so bad about it but just keep trying because one day it's going to stick and keep stay close to God. Mm. Try new things. Stop doing the same thing that you're always doing. That's not working. Bring your own salad dressing to restaurants. If you have to, to keep on track or, or um, whatever, you know, things like that tricks, just try different things. And then one day and just keep praying that God will heal you in that area. Oh, thank you for saying that. That's beautifully said. And that aspect of being gracious to ourselves and kind to ourselves, I have found is so important because we, we can be so hard on ourselves. So thank you for that reminder. And thank you so much for your ministry and your boldness, your courage to step out, get this book into the hands of so many other individuals and just to be of service to so many and such an, you're such an inspiration. So thank you so much, Erin, for coming on. We appreciate it. so much fun. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Oh gosh, yes, absolutely. (laughs) 